Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site. BettingAngle.us, a free site. It's Tuesday, September 7th, 2021. Let's talk boxing. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say, uh, as I make videos here online, from time to time I'll run into a fan community that's upset that I'm criticizing their fighter. You know, the Anthony Joshua crowd thinks that I'm biased against Anthony Joshua. Okay, fair enough. I'm a skeptic on parts of his game. But for me personally, a fighter who I've been challenging on some fights, I still believe he should have lost to Billy Joe Saunders, who I'll concede is a clear Hall of Famer. He's one of the great fighters of our time. Is the fighter over my shoulder, Saul Alvarez. Right? Make no mistake. I think Saul Alvarez is immensely talented. Make no mistake. I feel there's a path to victory against Saul Alvarez. And the public disagrees with me. That's fair. I believe where you make profits is the difference between what the public thinks and what's actually going on. I thought the Billy Joe Saunders fight was awfully close. And that was with Saunders fighting the wrong fight. Now let's talk about another Hall of Famer. He's one of my favorite people in the sport. When I was a kid, this guy was big in boxing. He's still big. His name is Bob Arum. Right now, Bob Arum, as you could imagine, is a rival of PBC, Premier Boxing Champions. Bob Arum sued PBC. Right? I get the feeling Bob sued PBC so he could actually force discovery of some of PBC's trade secrets. <clears throat> Well, Bob Arum is claiming that PBC is taking a big risk by having Caleb Plant fight Saul Alvarez. Now, with the nod to Cameo, if you're a boxing fan of a certain age, I believe Bob Arum is simply talking out the side of his neck. Right? Just understand, stylistically, this is the fight. Caleb Plant wants. This is Caleb Plant's best opportunity to get to the big time. Right? Let's mention a boxing secret here. Caleb Plant would have a harder time against Demetrius Andre. His chances of winning are lower and I'm talking about a guy who's going off at a plus 475 and a plus 500 right now on some boxing outlets, some gambling outlets, against Canelo. In my opinion, Caleb Plant would have a harder time against Demetrius Andre than he is going to have against Saul Alvarez. You know, Caleb Plant would have, in my opinion, a tougher time against David Benavides than he might have against Saul Alvarez. Now, the blueprint for this fight is a Caleb Plant fight, and it might jar some people because I understand. The consensus among boxing fans is that Canelo, who is as I've been saying here for years, one of the hardest punchers in the sport pound for pound, right? The blueprint for Caleb Plant is his fight, Plant's fight, against Mike Lee. Now let's talk about how Caleb Plant should approach this, keeping in mind the Dwyer rule of scoring. Canelo's going to enter the ring, rightly or wrongly. 
with a two-round advantage. Right? Don't get caught up in the world of politics and make-believe where they tell you, oh no, we don't care that Canelo is one of the sport's most popular fighters, is loved, fills arenas, has put a lot of money just off the box office of his fights in a lot of people's pockets, has lifted the sport, is a great ambassador for the sport. Right? You think of the kind of boxer you want your kid to look up to. If your kid says, oh, my favorite is Canelo, you're breathing easy. Right? It, it could have been prime Mike Tyson. Right? Some guy fighting Mitch Green in an alley in New York City. Outside the ring. No, no. It, it's Canelo. You're thinking, oh, great. Excellent. Right? It could have been Carlos Monzon. A guy with real problems. Outside of the ring. Your kid tells you it's Canelo, you're like, oh, thank God. You know, here's a guy whose life seems to be based on hard work and stuff like that. We'll overlook the Clint Buterol. We'll overlook that. Right? When you see Canelo and he's giving interviews and stuff like that, you're thinking, man, you know, this is the guy I would want, you know, as the Boy Scout leader of the local troop that my son's a part of. Right? This is the guy who you run into as your family's leaving church. Right? You see Canelo. We know in real life the story's more complicated as it almost always is. But understand, Canelo has one of the best images in boxing. Right? He has the kind of image boxing fans appreciate. It's Canelo who, in entering the ring for the Billy Joe Saunders fight, was teaching the fans of the importance of an undisputed title and how he wanted to fight Caleb Plant. Right? You're a fan. You're saying, whoa, I don't get it. I thought Canelo's a champ already. And Canelo is the guy who's letting you know, look, you know, in boxing, there are different levels. I'm a champ, but I'm not undisputed. Just like I'm a champ, Caleb Plant is a champ. We need to find out who the winner is in the ring. Now, we'll pretend that all of that doesn't matter when it comes to scoring. Come on. You know it does. You know Canelo enters with a two rounds to none advantage. You also know, too, the casino <clears throat> is giving relatively short odds on Canelo. Right? They're giving much too long odds. On Caleb Plant, you know the casino is hoping the favorite wins. Right? You understand that. They'd rather pay peanuts if they lose a bet than pay you plus 475 odds. So understand, structurally, Canelo has huge advantages here. He's the fighter who's known. If there's going to be an outcry, it's going to be one that happens if he's the person who loses. Right? So, let's get back to boxing and not politics. Canelo has a decided advantage in the political world. Does he have a decided advantage in the ring in this fight? The answer is no. Right? Understand what's happening here in real time. The casino is giving you a plus 475. A plus 475 on a competitive fight that if it breaks a certain way could be obvious by the fifth round that Canelo is in over his head. First thing Caleb Plant has to do is to not allow a pocket to form. You've seen Canelo fights where Canelo is inching forward. He has above average defense. His head is underrated. He has it on a swivel. Right? You saw that in the Danny Jacobs fight. He has his hands up like this. Understand, Canelo's shorter to begin with. He has his hands guarding his sides. 
He has his gloves up by the side of his head. It's hard to hit him with hooks. Canelo is the one coming forward. The guys who he's fighting look at him. Canelo has his sides protected. It looks like there's nothing to hit. So, of course, when Canelo comes forward and a fight breaks out in the pocket, then you notice Canelo has an excellent, dare I say it's one of boxing's best, left hooks. You understand Canelo is a gifted body puncher. He's already low, folks. So it's hard to block his left hook because he'll swing it in a way where it's coming from down low. It can get underneath your defense and hit you in the body. The last thing you want to do is lean over the pocket because Canelo is a technician, right? This is the guy who is reading you, right? The sport's an academic exercise for him. Canelo is seeing what you're throwing. Canelo has a long memory. He's seeing the openings. He's figuring things out. Right? Saunders lingers around the pocket. In a fight, I still think Saunders should have won. Saunders leans forward. Canelo, whatever Canelo planned to throw, he made the adjustment. Canelo throws uppercuts. Lands on Billy Joe to the point where Canelo knew the fight was over. Raises his hands. Right? Canelo sees what you're doing and then he'll tailor what he's doing. But understand, that's the flaw with Canelo, isn't it? You're fighting a slow-moving technician. You're fighting a guy with stamina problems who doesn't want to be in a rough-and-tumble thriller in Manila type fight. Canelo's in his envelope. He wants to weaken you with straight right hands, with defense and with great left hooks. So, Caleb Plant has the vastly superior legs. Folks, this is an analog to the Joshua Usyk fight. It's the challenger who they're giving you the odds on, who has the better legs. So what Plant has to do, just like he did in the Mike Lee fight, and I have the highlights in my favorites folder here on YouTube is Caleb Plant can't allow a pocket to form. As Canelo inches forward, let Canelo understand that his rhythm is not going to be the rhythm of the fight. He's inching forward to come up to you to exchange. As he's inching forward slowly and methodically, you let him understand. Player, you're going in the wrong direction. I'm only going to be in front of you sporadically. You're going to have to come find me. There's nothing to inch forward to. I'm moving around the ring. Let me also say too, and this is the big one, Caleb Plant has to keep the fight in transition. Think basketball. You don't want a half-court game to break out. You want it to be in transition. So what Caleb Plant needs to do is to keep moving. Right? He needs to keep moving. He needs to have his legs create the opening. In other words, Canelo's going to be tight. He needs to force Canelo to turn. Right? To turn. To find him. So if he moves this way and Canelo turns, he needs to have it planned. He needs to have it timed. So as Canelo moves, he hits him. In other words, you want to keep Canelo turning off balance with the movement, with the spacing. The big other secret in the fight 
is that Canelo has only one of the two great left hooks in this fight. Caleb Plant has one of boxing's best left hooks, and it's mobile. He can throw it on the move. So you're fighting a computer in Canelo who's keeping track of the angles of punches, who sees you throw a punch from an angle, and then Canelo thinks to himself, okay, I can block that punch right here. Right? So, Caleb Plant needs to hide his hands. The way to do so, and it's in the Mike Lee film, is to have your hands ready to throw, but to wait for the right time to throw them. In other words, the legs create the opening. Then when he sees the opening, lead with power shots. You understand, show your hands only when you absolutely have to. But show your hands. I don't want Caleb Plant trying to win a decision. I want Caleb Plant hunting Canelo. In other words, Caleb Plant has the speed advantage to be aggressive. When you have the speed advantage, when the other guy hasn't seen enough of your punch pattern to block it, that's going to give Caleb Plant a decided advantage in the early part of this fight. I know. What I'm saying is going to sound shocking to some people. But what I want Caleb Plant doing is to lead with power shots, lead with left hooks. In other words, don't have Canelo able to think to himself, as Usyk's going to be able to think to himself, Oh, Joshua has touched me with his jab. The straight right might be coming in about half a second. Right? Forget the patterns. Rather, you want Canelo turning, thinking, where is Plant? Where is he now? He shifted to the left. You want Canelo turning and being greeted with a left hook up top. Right? You want Canelo forced to look for Plant's hands. You want Plant dancing around where Canelo can't find him, and you want Plant to have his hands cocked, ready to throw. Right? Finally, don't reach for Canelo's body. Folks, he's shorter than you. Right? If you look at Ali films, you're going to notice Ali hardly ever threw body shots. If you look at Vladimir Klitschko films, you're going to notice that Vladimir Klitschko hardly ever threw body shots. You're fighting one of the hardest punchers in the sport. You reach for the body like Razor Ruddick did against Lennox Lewis. That leaves you too open for the counter. Understand, Canelo is advanced. He can lead. He can counter. Don't reach for his body. You want to win this fight by not allowing a pocket to form, using your legs to create the angles, coming in with power shots, throwing enough power shots to catch the judge's attention in every round. You don't want to be Tyron Woodley, hardly throwing making it easy for judges to give rounds to the opponent. No, you want to flash enough power shots every round. Every round. So that the judges are thinking, well, Plant is controlling the movement. Right? Plant is sudden. Plant is landing shots. And you want Canelo to understand over time. This guy's punches sting. This guy is here to hurt me. Plant also has to be conscientious of where he is in the ring. Right? You always want to have an exit strategy if you're up against the ropes against Canelo. 
You also want to force Canelo to move. You want to force Canelo to tire himself out. So, I do believe that Plant has a very good chance of winning this fight. It's an easy fight to bet. Because whether you think he wins or not, you know that he shouldn't be going off at a plus 475. What they're telling you is that if these guys fought 5.75 times, they're claiming Canelo wins four of the five, 4.75 of the 5.75 uh, times. Canelo's a great fighter. Canelo does not have the legs that Caleb Plant has. Canelo doesn't have the legs that Billy Joe Saunders had. I believe Saunders wanted to show that he could box with Canelo. I want Caleb Plant to think about winning the fight, not some style points. Right? He needs to make this the opposite of Caleb Plant, Callum Smith. In other words, rather than have Canelo inching forward and Callum Smith then on his back foot being pursued by the shorter guy, very bad visual for um, visual for all 12 rounds. I want Caleb Plant to be moving around and then as Canelo comes forward and then has to turn right or left to find him, I want Plant to jump in with home run shots. Right? Understand, Plant is so sudden that Mike Lee hits the canvas multiple times and you didn't get the feeling that Mike Lee knew he had been hit hard enough to get dropped until he hit the canvas. I also want Plant to think about a faster start than Billy Joe Saunders had. I want the dialogue to be different. I thought Saunders comes back against Canelo. Right? Obviously, I saw a different fight than everyone else did. Canelo wins the fight, fractures Sa Saunders' eye socket. But I want Plant to jump out here. Right? I want Plant to have it be obvious to everyone that he has the faster feet than Canelo. That he's coming in with sudden left hooks. Right? I want him to time things. As Canelo turns, he should be open right up the middle. Right? Understand, Plant can hit him right up the middle with a hook. He doesn't have to throw a straight punch. I get the feeling Plant is better throwing hooks than straight punches. All Plant has to be is off at the side. So as Canelo turns toward him, Plant gets off the hook to hit Canelo between his guard. Right? So, let me just say, I want a fast start from Caleb Plant. Then I want Plant to bring it home. I don't want Plant to rely on the judges. If he gets off to a fast start and Canelo starts tiring, then be bold. Jump in. Don't allow Canelo to hit you to the body. You don't want him to be that close. You want to circle him like a shark, then jump in, try to take him out. If you're unable to do so, then dance the last few rounds. Right? At that point, as your plan C, right? Didn't get the early stoppage, which is a possibility, right? The Mike Lee fight, folks, is an early stoppage. That's the fight I think's the blueprint. Didn't get the early stoppage. Canelo survives your, you know, two-thirds into the fight onslaught. Canelo gets a second win. Make it so that at the end of the fight, you're going the distance. It's a leg show. You're dancing. You're shuffling. At that point, you dare the judges, dare them, to take it from you. Right? Canelo, great fighter. I don't think Canelo is the athlete that Caleb Plant is. 
right? If plant can keep this a full court fight where he's moving around the ring, think Ali, and he's coming in with big shots, right? If he can keep the fight in transition where Canelo does not know where the pocket is, where even if Canelo drops his hands and runs inside to find Caleb Plant, Canelo then, as he's running, realizes there is no inside, right? If Plant can create that type of fight, he could make this convincing. So the bet I like, and it's dangerous, this is not for the timid, is plan plus 475 i'll agree canelo has the punching power to stop anyone right so i'll hedge it with canelo by stoppage that's how i see the fight right now but you need to understand that what we're saying here just like in the joshua fight is that if this fight goes the distance and canelo wins a decision and he's won some close decisions in his career. You lose it all. Right? That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Um, I understand Khaled Plan is getting a lot of advice from a lot of people. Right? I just want him to consider the idea that his superior athleticism, his superior legs, his on par, left hook could win it for him. Let me say this too. I personally believe there's something wrong with Caleb Plant's right hand. But one of the knockdowns in the Mike Lee fight comes off a right hand. Right? If Canelo, like me, has looked at film and concludes that there's something wrong with Caleb Plant's right hand. If I'm Plant, I would wait for the right opportunity to introduce Canelo to it. Right? Don't come in thinking volume. Come in thinking movement. Being a shark, circling in the water, then jumping in with power shots, not having a pocket form. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Understand, if Khaled Plan beats Canelo, we already know, because the negotiations went public, that there is a rematch clause, right? If Plant does so in such a way that it's clear that he has a structural advantage with his legs, Canelo might be hesitant to take that rematch. If Canelo takes the rematch, right, then for the rematch, if in fact the foot speed advantage is as pronounced as I think it is, right, then for the rematch, don't be surprised if Plant doesn't go off as the favorite. In other words, Plant doesn't need a lucky night to win this fight. He just has to be on his game. And unlike Billy Joe Saunders, he just needs to always remember to execute his game plan. The rhythm he should follow in the fight shouldn't be Canelo's. Right? It should be his. Don't allow a pocket to form. Come in with power shots. Right? Don't allow Canelo to rest. Don't allow Canelo to corner you. If he fights that fight, he could win this by three or four rounds. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.